Um, hey, Raquel, can you hear us? Hey, Raquel. Yes, yeah, sorry, can you hear me? That's okay, just maybe stop. The, we don't want to start the recording until we start the meeting. Okay, no problem. Sorry about that. That's okay. Thank you. I'm going to mute this for a second. We just need to get organized here. It's the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, great. Thanks, everybody. working. <laughs> you never know in this room. Um, so just real quickly, I just, just in terms of my updates, um, I would like to highlight that the budget referendum um, is being held on May 14th. We held a public hearing last week. We had a lot of questions that I know members of the public had. Uh, it was two weeks ago, I guess. And those, uh, the uh, answers to those questions are available online. You'll go down and see like an, a, a button you can click on that takes you to the uh, budget referendum section. There'll be a questions of all the questions, uh, answers to all the questions that were posed at the public hearing, as well as links to relevant documents. So we wanted to get that out there. Um, so May 14th is election day, but you can actually vote uh, absentee ballot for the budget referendum. And those ballots are now available in the town clerk's office. So please go to uh, the town clerk's portion of the website to find out more about the uh, process to submit an absentee ballot. Um, the other thing I want to mention is, um, uh, oh, and did want to highlight too, that just as a reminder, town officials, elected officials um, cannot be advocating for the budget once we call the referendum. Um, and so that's why the public might wonder why we're not, we can give facts and information and obviously advocate to vote because it's important to vote. Um, but um, we can do so, so privately, but in terms of using town resources, we can't advocate necessarily for the budget. So just wanted to highlight that. Um, the third thing I wanted to mention was that there had been, we've all had some conversations both at our last couple of meetings, we've had a very engaged public um, and a lot of discussion about what the appropriate conduct and rules are for our meeting during public comment. And I think it raised a lot of interesting issues about, you know, do you have to give your name and address? Do you have to, so it's really, I think, a, a board policy discussion that might be worth doing where we could post it, you know, somewhere so people understand what the code of conduct is or what our process and policy is for handling questions from the public. And so I thought I'd put that on a future agenda, maybe in May, and we can talk about how we would want to like, you know, just spell it out more simply so there's no confusion or, or, or expectations different than what, how we conduct our meetings. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And I think in an age where the agendas are published electronically, attaching the, the, the process. Oh, that's um, a good idea. Yeah. 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 So that it's available for every, um, uh, just down here with all the, yeah, yeah. All the goodies. Yeah. Yeah. And even like we have a Zoom link, you yeah. know, there yeah. could be a, um, you know, rules for public or comment. Like, like, right header. Is, like, uh, that's yeah. actually good. You know, it's belt and suspenders, but I think part of the frustration is people come in thinking it's one thing and it's really another right. thing. And, mm -hmm. and I think we've learned some stuff in doing like research, like yeah. you're only supposed to be able to talk about what's on the agenda. Mm -hmm. I think I've always said for the last eight, nine years, come in and speak your mind about anything. It's, yeah. you know, it's your opportunity to say whatever you want to say. And in reality, FOIA says, no, time out. It's what's on the agenda is what public Which comment is, is supposed to be about. Yeah. And, and I think we can decide how we want to manage that, um, when we want to respond, you know, and I think lay out some of the ground rules for that. Um, and I also think people use the term town meeting, um, loosely. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so sometimes a public hearing is very different from, from a formal town meeting where we're having voting yeah. or a board of selectmen meeting or board of finance meeting. So mm -hmm. trying to like make sure that, you know, there's people understand that it's very different in terms of what's the co purpose of the meeting is and what is conducted at the meeting. Right. Peggy, hey, would these uh, rules apply to all boards and commissions or just this one? I mean, it's a fair question. Um, I think we start with us. And then, you know, sometimes we can make suggestions to maybe each chair, They because I feel they know their boards, they know their audience, they know their regulations and things that they have to follow. Maybe we have like a recommendation of conduct or policy, but you can adopt your own, particularly those boards that get a lot of public engagement. Um, so like PNG. And I think that they actually do a great job at that because it's very regulatory in nature of when people can talk like we're not in that same zone necessarily yes. yeah. so 
I think it'll be a good conversation, and then if we could set up something that we think is best practice, maybe, and and then other boards could adopt it if they wanted to adopt it. Um, so that that was just part of my comment because uh, Scott and I had talked about it, and I didn't put it on tonight, but I think I'll try to put it on for May, mm -hmm. um, so we can kind of, and something kind of us for work through to, to talk about. I'm pretty sure all five of us are going to be in violent agreement on this. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> it's going to help budding structure the yeah. meeting and just. Lay the ground. So, well, I yeah. think it helps. Yeah, I think you need structure and you need respect, right? Mm -hmm. But we also don't want to disappoint people too, right? Sure. And feel like they're not being hurt. So it's trying to find that good balance where people are feeling they're being hurt, but we're doing it in an orderly way and a respectful way. Mm -hmm. um, so. And I'm usually cool with, you know, to your point of like off agenda comment. As long yeah. as it's a comment, we're not expecting an answer that night or that immediate, you know, you know, during the comment. I'm okay with that. Um, but maybe two, three minutes. I mean, I think there's a conversation we have to think and about. And all of those are on the table, right? The duration yeah. of the public comment period yeah. during yeah. the meeting, yeah. um, right. the, you know, each speaker, the number of um, times at the microphone. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, we've Sometimes seen that recently, during. right, for sure. Right. So I, yeah. I don't think yeah. any of it is intended to stifle any, any voice. Um, ideally, we would, if people would come in with a clear idea of what it is they want to say. Yeah, maybe organize, uh, which I think is a right. smart thing. So yeah. I, think, I think a little structure works works well for everybody. And, um, and of course, we always reserve the right to be flexible. And to other towns do have this. So we've right. started looking a little bit at what some other towns might have as a best practice. So it's not what we're starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. No one's ever thought of this before. Yeah. But, uh, right. uh, we just never felt really a need. But I do think with more engagement, it's important to have some ground rules. So. But especially with the bigger projects going on, too, I think it's important for us to have the ground rules at these meetings because we do have a number of items on our agendas that we need to get through. But I do think it's also important that maybe we offer uh, like if there's a big project going on, some public information sessions throughout the course. I know that was really important specific, to, yeah. um, specific to that project. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. it was really important with the school project um, that we had those because then it does give folks the opportunity to have that little bit of back and back and forth side. And we did that for Academy. Yeah. Prior to, uh, referendum as well. so. And even just the budget. Just kind of, so. yeah. 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 Just continuing have those and publicize those but yeah we need to make sure we stay on task with right. the agendas <laughs> okay so that is uh, my update and any other ideas and reports or slightly comments i have a couple i'll be yeah. quick okay so affordable housing committee they it's kind of long <laughs> Handwritten 2.5. Yeah. No, no, yeah. The Affordable Housing Committee, they are going to do another community conversation in May. Date is pending on that, but they're planning on doing it at the Senior Center. Okay. Um, Senior Commission, we are having the Cafe Grand Reopening on Thursday, May 16th at noon. And if anybody would like to attend that, RSVPs need to be in by May 13th. What was the date? May, May 16th is the reopening uh, celebration and RSVP uh, by the 13th. Now. I just want to I just want to be awesome. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, for the budget referendum, the Senior Center does have the dial a ride program and bus service if anybody needs help getting to the polls. Um, we just ask that you make sure that you schedule that as soon as possible so that they can plan all of their routes. And then, um, Austin, since you're here, you get the uh, in-person thank you for the quick work over on the soccer fields at Salt Meadow. I got a notification from a coach. There was a, uh, a hole, probably a dog hole, and Austin and his team was right on it. And same with uh, John Ioneco and Public Works for the craters that were in the parking lot. I think within 30 minutes of sending that email, his team was out there regrading and filling in those holes. So thank you, uh, Salt Meadow. Although, yeah, so thank you guys. Those for are all recurring the craters, that. too, right? We get those it's a lot every year. Yeah, yeah, water. Yeah. Um, and then one last thank you to Fred Muzzer. Um, I know Muzzer. 
Is it Muser? Muser. Fred Muser. Muser. Yeah. A lot of folks in town know Fred. And so about five years ago, he alerted John Michael Parker to the lack of a memorial up at the Capitol that was dedicated to our Vietnam War veterans. So under Fred's leadership, they tracked down 616 names, raised over $8,000. And uh, just on the 17th of this month, they unveiled three plaques up at the Capitol that have the names, hometowns, and branches of service for those service members that, you know, gave their greatest sacrifice for others. And um, Fred did that all along with the help of John Michael Parker and the other members of our American Legion, Griswold Post 79. So just want to thank Fred for all of his leadership on that project. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's great. Amazing. I know I, he's talked about it for so long. Yes, yeah. he has. Yeah. And so I know we're thrilled to see that be success. It was the only veterans group that hadn't been recognized all the other, you know, conflicts. Yeah. There were memorials. So, <clears throat> so that was right a, a great accomplishment. Any other updates or? I, I, so I just want to really, I had a really good conversation with a resident about the beach passes and Garvin Point and the idea that we were only going to be under the state um, grant restrictions for a year. And, and I explained that, that unfortunately, the project was delayed. So when we said all of that, we thought it was going to be this last winter and it would all be done by now. And it's just been delayed. And so if people process. understood it to be a fixed one year period, apologies, it was really the duration of the project, which we expected to only be one year. Um, of course, we had to redesign the system and, and all of that. Um, but in the course of that, I did some investigations and uh, Fairfield has a great um, policy around parking permits. And I would commend to us as we think about what our policy is going to be moving forward post grant restrictions, that Fairfield would be one of the towns we look at for, um, for guidance and, and, and just outright plagiarism. Yeah. <laughs> well, the whole, you know, well, you know we kind of committed in the previous meeting, we're going to do a, a review again of everything, right? right? So I think right. that's fair. That's that's good to do. Anything else? Or... Al, any updates? No? no. Good? No. Okay, great. I know you got a problem. Um, all right, with that, then, um, citizens' comments. Um, Raquel, do we have any hands raised for citizens' comments? And a reminder that there's an opportunity at the end of the meeting if you want to ask a question or I should say make a comment <laughs> um, as well. Um, no, I don't see any hands raised. Okay, great. Thank you, Raquel. Um, all right, um, moving on to item number six. Um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Any further comments or questions? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. okay. Passes unanimously. All right, moving <laughs> on to item number seven um, is, um, and I'll, uh, Raquel, if you could invite up, uh, I know uh, Dr. Cook is here, and I'm not sure if there's members of the Board of Education on this matter, but um, discuss and take action uh, to approve a request by the Board of Education to return $226,541 in 2022-2023 funds to the Special Education External Placement Reserve Fund and authorizing for use to cover an unanticipated cost in the current fiscal year pending Board of Finance approval. So moved. Second. Okay, so this is um, our board members received a memo outlining this. Um, and this is some one of the reasons we have this fund set up is because this has happened occasionally where something much larger happens with special education, which can have some very large, lumpy, unpredictable costs. Um, and so we have typically allowed the Board of Education to do this with funds because every year they usually return some funds back to the town. Uh, but I'll let uh, Dr. Cook talk a minute about this and answer any questions. For you. Yes, thank you, uh, Ms. Lyons. Um, the, uh, the board received the memo that uh, we provided you. We had some unanticipated costs, mostly related to legislative action that occurred after our budget was um, submitted and approved last year. And so um, there were um, additional costs for our 18 to 22 year old program. And then also we've experienced some additional outplaced costs this year. And so 
what we would ask is that the funds we returned um, to the uh, um, board of uh, selectmen and board of finance in uh, um, probably was around you know, October timeframe by the time everything was uh, was worked out and uh, and returned um, that that be put back into our special ed fund for immediate use in uh, in those areas that I described. Any additional questions? I know this is. Um, do you know when the last time we did this kind of transaction? Because I know I've, I, we've had to do this in the past. I just don't remember how long ago it was. A year ago, um, we re you returned funds to us to pay for the armed security. So it's similar to that type of request in that it's um, money that we return to the town that then is returned to us for, for use immediately. What's different about this one is that it's um, special ed and we do have that reserve fund. It typically runs around $350,000. We really try not to touch that because $350,000 could reflect, you know, two students that maybe moved into town that were unanticipated. Um, you know, special ed outplacement costs have a tendency to be pretty, pretty fluid and um, volatile. And so, um, you know, we would still be able to, through this action, our intent is to leave it still at 350 at the end of this year. Um, but this would, would help with a, a gap we have in that, that budget right now. Okay. Any other questions? I mean, this is a good thing. We're fortunate that we have the funds to handle this, you know, because sometimes this could be a big budget buster for them, right? Um, so we're grateful. No further questions. All in favor, say aye. 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 Great. All right. Thank you. Um, so that'll go on to the uh, finance approval. Um, the next item on the agenda, item number eight, is an update from the chair and vice chair of our planning and uh, planning and zoning commission on their plan of conservation and development and discussion of the draft document. So we did get the draft and I fully confess, I did a, a quick screw. I'm not ready to provide comments, but it is an incredible piece of work and it's very well written. Thank I you. love your intro letter. Thank you. Um, so, um, but I thought it'd be helpful to talk about the process and then we could figure out how we can give you some of our feedback more formally, you know. Um, sure. You know, right. once you've gone through the doc. Right. So, yeah, here it is. We're yep. very proud of it. hundred pages. Whoa. Um, yeah. don't know how that happened, but. Like uh, that topic. Yeah. 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 A nice number. And um, I thought what I'd do, so this is Bob Reinhardt, who's our vice chair now and um, has been integral in the process and especially in getting us to the to the finish line with it so far, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I thought what I'd do though is give a quick review of, of the process and where we've been. And you know, I've been here a couple of times before to share with you. And then what we've done since our last the last time I presented to you to the board. Mm -hmm. um, and then talk a little bit if you have any questions about um, sort of the implementation part of it is what's most important at this point. And we didn't have that last time we came here. So so that's key. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, we started the process in September 2022, um, which seems like about a century ago. Um, I then came to the Board of Selectmen in March 2023 just to let you know how we were proceeding and what we had done so far. Um, we were back again in January 2024 to give you an update, and at that point we had moved really quite well far along and coordinating with you all too with the strategic planning so that they're they're compatible and, and consistent. And um, and that was really helpful for us, I, I must say, to get that feedback and all the information that we did um, through this strategic plan. Um, in the process, we have we we learned that our themes, our main themes, which were vitality and connectivity, resilience and sustainability, opportunity and growth, which we paired, became our goals. Um, and actually, this is when our vice chair, Bob Reinhardt, came on board and wanted to kind of hone it down, you know, distill it. You know, we had a lot of, we were sort of information gathering for a long part, and then it was, it was important to reduce it to something that was really impactful. Um, so out of that process, we established seven policies for Madison, and I'm going to turn it over to Bob if that's okay. <laughs> Talk about that process of using a matrix to, you know, all the different things we had gathered for the natural environment and the built environment using those themes then became goals, policies, and actions. So can sure. you explain that a bit? So <clears throat> I'm not sure how much you all have seen or familiar with what we've come up with so far, and I'm not sure what you've seen and what's new in this document, but the what Carol's talking about is 
we took those dual themes at the beginning and broke them down into three goals, which are very specific. And those are on page 50 if you haven't seen those before. Uh, but basically, it's just a rephrasing of the, of the dual uh, tracks that we had before, but a little more succinct, I think, and, and specific that would then allow us to build the, <clears throat> the policies and the actions that we follow. Next thing we did is we broke down, instead of doing a, a built and natural environment concept of here's a built environment, here's what we do about that, we said that's just background. And the reality is it's built, <clears throat> built environment, natural environment, and human environment. Is that the scrap one? Yeah, that's the, the scrub, regional one. Regional. Yeah. <clears throat> so the human one is kind of, it's, Everywhere. Like it's <laughs> the only reason to have <laughs> it is human <laughs> environment. Yeah. But that's, so we just took those three as well and basically informed the development of the policies. <clears throat> so I'm not sure the policies have changed much. There are seven, they're on page 51. <clears throat> they, we continue to try to tighten them up to be as, there's, they're aspirational, but at the same point, they have enough detail in them or enough to it so you can start developing the, the goals around them and on these things. So we went through those, and then for each of those, we developed <clears throat> goals. So to if you think of the policies as <clears throat> a strategy for attaining the three goals that we set forward, then underneath that are sub-goals to help you implement the strategy. So each of them has between, I don't know, three, five, six different sub-goals. That's where the rubber's going to hit the road. That's what we take in the implementation plan and assign it to an entity. So every goal will have a group saying, this is yours, you have to do it. So yeah, there's seven policies, there are 28 sort 20, of action okay. items, yeah. And that'll be in the implementation plan, we'll look at that real quick. And then underneath those, we started balancing out the, excuse me, it's beautiful weather, but bad for allergies. Bad for allergies. So in each of the policies, then we have those, those goals and each goal, we started putting a specific task that we wanted the, the entity who owned the goal to achieve. And we realized quickly that we were getting very specific and we're getting it to be a, being a bit of a micromanager um, situation. So instead, what we decided was each of the policies has those goals. The goals are laid out. We'll give it to someone and say, this is your job. And please make sure you consider the following. So in each, each of those, there's a couple that we thought were very important. So. And the policy A, create an accessible community that fosters easy connections and the rest. The goal one is create a downtown development plan to include the entire downtown village district. That's the goal. <clears throat> but then we had three sub tasks that we said, you have to consider this. And so the first one was balancing commercial and residential requirements. So the idea is that we can assign the creating downtown development plan to someone and say, you have to consider commercial and residential. It must be addressed. You can't just pretend it's not. You can say, I did, we didn't do anything, but you have to consider it. We did that for everyone, just to give them more public commentary of sorts, just to kind of get things going in the right direction. So there's multiple pages of this if you haven't read yeah. it. Well. well, so I just wanted to say again, there's a lead entity, and then we realized yeah. there are partner entities, um, and that's really important. And, and that was important in how we structured this, and this is how actually the Board of Selectmen ended up being a lead entity on 10 of our- Yeah, we have a request. I don't know, that's what actually- Wait for the bunch We would really appreciate when you get a chance to read through it all and yeah. see the, you know, get to the implementation table and see, you know, what we've tasked you all to do, um, see if it makes sense. If you wanna, you know, push back, give us feedback, whatever, have a larger conversation just focusing on that. That might make sense too in the future if you feel comfortable doing that. And if you go to page 60 where the implementation yeah. plan, everything is there, the goals are there, then the policy is there, <clears throat> and each of the sub goals for each policy are there as well. So now we have a slight disagreement on the commission with respect to the board of selectmen being lead entities. I don't think you should be. I think you're the executive branch in charge of making sure it happens and not doing it. So the request is you to accept this, <clears throat> your assignment as the lead entity, or tell us who you want to assign it to. I know I'm the board of finance. <laughs> <laughs> that might not be a Ball good plan. Ball plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you know, we, we struggled with it, and it's yeah. actually, it's, 
it's been really, I think, really productive to have yeah. that kind of conversation yeah. of like, how do we do yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking through these. I'm well, can you, <laughs> can you pick one of these policies that you did have discussion around and, and what were the alternate ideas? Sure, I mean, we can even start. There are 10, because there are 10, I wrote them down. Um, did you have the, the alternates? For the this. preparation. No, I don't have alternates, but, but let's just give you an example of like, the first policy A to create a multimodal transportation master plan. And I think you know our thinking is that you all oversee the big picture, the budget, you know, what government can do. And so correct me or add to this, please. But um, you know, that's how we were thinking, well, this could be the Board of Selectmen then, because they have the resources and the access and the knowledge um, to deal with this kind of big big project. Right, I disagree. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is why Bob's here tonight. This is great. So, 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 so there's <laughs> there's no commission or committee that's, that's, that could be assigned to this right now. You have to use uh, it. And, and, and I think that's why, on that one that's why the Board of Selectmen is the right entity because what we do routinely mm -hmm. is create ad hoc and committees exactly. that are delegations. You can take it on and delegate the responsibility. The, right, so we, so we routinely <laughs> delegate yeah. Um, great. Ta task oriented things, right. and yeah. so if the if the parent responsibility lies with us, we can then delegate Absolutely. as we see fit. Yeah. Yeah. Committee and tell them we yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, again, in the strategic plan, there was you know there was discussion about restructuring some of the commissions and ad hoc committees and cleaning up cleaning house. I would say, in terms of all of those groups, and you know, then we're throwing out these policies that. Yeah. Combine and recombine and shift and you know look at things slightly differently than what we we've, we've done in the past. So it would be yeah you know, it would be great to have you create commissions or committees or ad hoc or whatever. Yeah, and, and, an ad hoc committee that you create rid of something too. I mean, and some maybe clean. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and note that town staff is on all of them. Town staff is there. So that's also you know a challenge that we always face because right. of the. Um, Death and, by committees. Yes, <laughs> because it's it's they're you know they're not paid extra to be sitting in all these night meetings. You know, yeah. so it is kind of a challenge. And then there's the administrative piece of it we were just talking about. You know, we're stretched on getting people to do minutes and then run hyper meetings. If you know there are a lot of people in attendance, um, and and then finding hybrid meeting spaces because we're mm -hmm. getting crunched now. Everybody wants to do hybrid, and we don't have a lot of resources. So that's not to distract from what you're saying, but I get. I think this is good because it opens the conversation up. Because um, I've struggled with it too. Like, where does this land? Who's going to do it? And, and how do you actually implement yeah, it? Yeah, and we're kind of wrestling with this in the strategic plan. And I owe the board here a follow up on that because we had started an implementation plan that we're struggling with. Pro I have some solutions that are probably going to kick in until July 4th, or not July 4th, July 1st with the new budget. You know, who's going to kind of shepherd a lot of that stuff? Because you also need somebody to coordinate all this, also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, but I like the way this is laid out and I have to compliment you on the, um, the goals I thought were well-written and better written than some of our strategic plan goals because then we struggle with things, words, and, th but this is, I think it's well-written. I don't know who's the good writer in the group, but, uh, maybe it's Taiki, but I thought you did a good job with some well, of the I think yeah, we gave, we gave Taiki sort of the raw material and then, yeah. and then John Kaskowski cleaned it and yeah. his team cleaned it yeah, up for good, us. Yeah, good, So, but some of this, I thought, well, that sounds so much better than what we have in the strategic plan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, just to back up a little for a second too, remember that from planning and zoning perspective, you know, our zoning regulations and our maps are our comprehensive plan, and the plan of conservation and development is our master plan. It's how we think of it, and that's different from the strategic plan. Right. So, you know, again, I don't think, Peggy, you should be comparing too much or feeling that, you know. Well, but these are overlapping, like transportation. That was sure. a highlighted thing in the strategic plan. As no, well. so I got the yeah. strategic plan maps to this. Yeah, there, yeah, there's which is no great. Caps other than things that we don't care about. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, which is great. So, so not to describe and the state. Yeah. So I, I have some, some thoughts on bandwidth. Um, I like that you made the effort to put a priority next to everything. We argued about that. Um, <laughs> one of the <laughs> one of the organizational dilemmas in assigning priority is that everything becomes urgent and yeah. and then what value is that label, right? The the high versus the low. 
Um, so everything can't be high. Right. And you almost have to be arbitrary and say, right. sort of like grading on the curve, you can yeah. have one high, two moderates, and three lower. Yeah, four, we four didn't even right? right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I but think, you know, the other the other way I would would love to see you look at this is the lead entity and the prioritization that they've got. And if you've got one lead entity with five high priority mm -hmm. projects, you're very likely going to overwhelm them. And so that might be a second <laughs> filter. Just like them with 10. <laughs> well, but but any any volunteer organization in town, which is virtually all of these. Yeah. Um, I think to be sensitive to the number of high priorities that any lead entity has and maybe come up with some sort of admittedly arbitrary cap on what that is. Well, what about the idea of just not having priorities? Uh, I, I like the idea of having priorities because it, it's, 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 it's you guys saying these are the things that should be paid attention to first. So I think eight action items, I can't imagine like 28 can be all worked at the same time too. Well, that's I, I why I, that's why I said this is a bandwidth issue. Some are sequential, in fact, where you have to yeah. you know, start with a master plan and then work, right. work it out. Right. Um, I don't know if you remember that when I first talked to you about the previous, the 2013 plan of conservation and development, there were over a hundred action items and only, you know, by our count, only really about 13 got done. Um, some are in progress, so we do, that's that's not including some others. Um, so when we looked at it, we thought, okay, we, we don't want that many. We want to narrow it down as much as we can. Right. So, yeah, so within 28, we have prioritized high and moderate. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think it's good to do that, and I think it's uh, what we we should review that and you know and say, well, if we're unanimous in saying that is a low priority for the board, you have to decide to reflect that, right? Because some of the stuff is going to be in your house, right? Your real houses as a commission. Yep. Um, and we want to know if there's going to be conflict with that, right? If somehow, mm -hmm. you know. And conflict okay. for town resources. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. So I think it would be good to know what you think the priorities are mm -hmm. and are for your commission and for the town. And then um, and then we can kind of weigh in on that. You can always call it tier one, tier two, tier three, if you wanted to get mm -hmm. away from the the okay. priority language. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's more weight as opposed to how, how certain you get them done or how quickly you get them done. Right. Maybe all of them need to get done. Well, I think that their existence on here speaks to a need to get them done. It's a question of the the, the reality of phasing and sequencing that, that mm -hmm. has to happen. We're not an un, un, unlimited resource organization. So. Right, but we don't want to be in a position of the 100 action items and 13 get done right. in 10 years. I mean, right. That's pretty lame. So. I mean, also keep in mind that we do think of this as a living document and yeah. priorities may change and of new course. things may appear that yeah, we should anticipate right. yeah. Um, yeah. like a pandemic. You could do like a however you do tier high medium but if you say each policy has one number one. Mm -hmm. So and one number two and everything else is so to my way of thinking you just be very cold and calculated oh, yeah. and say in this group, you yeah, know in a group there's only one high priority. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. you know and then I thought about that two yeah, like that level twos and then the rest of them yeah. are all level threes it forces some really hard critical thinking yeah. about what is in there right mm -hmm. um and, and to put them at tier three within the group doesn't mean they're not important right but it just means that if if we have to do something in sequence that this one's going to come yeah. first but if, yeah, it's okay. kind of like with the strategic planning process you know remember the sticky notes on the Everybody that attended that mm -hmm. um, yeah. all of a sudden had to pick three priorities and right. like put a sticky note on the topic, and that's all of a sudden you saw this flood, and then the other one maybe just had a couple, you know. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of, you know. So you kind of you kind of want to also if you want to take a whack at the implementation yeah. table and yes, and put those numbers in there, yeah, as you see these issues and actions. I just you guys are so much more intimate with the document and the and the the, the logic behind their existence in here. Okay. I think ours would be really arbitrary. Okay. And uh, uninformed. Well, but I but I think it would be helpful, you know, I think it would be good for us to have an opportunity to give you direct, like more specific comments, right? So that we've read this now and thoroughly and um and maybe agree on the number one. Um, or maybe, yeah, maybe we could at least 
you know, come in with some thoughts on it, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just trying to, I'm thinking, do we do kind of a work session? Maybe it, it doesn't have to be with the whole commission, maybe where we can just kind of work sure. with you. And, and Even just give, the two of you. And, you know, and you, yeah. you're kind of just listening to our you thoughts can, and you, you can have us argue in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be fantastic. Happy to do that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, and I think, um, I think we did, like, we, you know, the strategic plan and I think the charter, that was something where the commission, um, you know, we had the opportunity to go page by page, right? And and just kind of not, not wordsmith, but more just provide perspective, like, you know, um, you could carve out an hour and just call it like a work, work session or yeah. something. I still be fun uh, meeting, yeah, but fine. not like formal, you know, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 So um, just also so you know, yeah. this is like this latest draft that you just received yeah. last week, I think, is what we're calling the public hearing draft. Right. So this that we're one. really this not going to touch yeah. it until yeah. the public hearing Fair. happens yeah. on July 11th. Yeah. We can take lots of comments, feedback, and, you know, make notes and, and toward changing it. Um, again, once we get public feedback normally. So you think maybe after the public hearing would be better to have that work session? Or I think whatever before? whatever you all are comfortable with, it doesn't matter. Do, I think we do it before. Yeah. We'll just, just take it as part of the feedback. Right. Yeah. I, mean, right. I, I promise not to read it anymore because I kept changing it. But <laughs> well, even though, I this stuff. <laughs> even though it's like I still have to want to tweet, yeah. but I want to hear back from yeah. More than just us. Well, and maybe for awesome. us, it might be good to hear the feedback first too before we. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. generally yeah. works. Yeah, you know, so maybe we. Do I mean, we sent it to all the stakeholders who were listed in the yeah. appendix. I mm -hmm. think Aaron sent it all it, to all of them too. So maybe and we're starting to get some feedback, yeah. even okay. you know, individual feedback. You know, we're just collecting it at this yeah. point, but we can't make a change to the document right until after now the public it's, hearing. It's, it's then it goes back before you all for mm -hmm. final approval. So maybe we wait till after that, because then that there's an iterative part after that, and you'll have our feedback after mm -hmm. the public hearing. Because then we can digest together. the public feedback. Yeah. 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 And then we'd have one last, you know, go around. Go around yeah. when it is pretty much finalized. So okay, so we'll plan on after the July public hearing. I had one final comment. Um, I think there's another partner entity that we can lean on more heavily here, and that's the land trust. Mm -hmm. I notice you. Uh, they're included under the inventory of policy B. But I think when it comes to open space planning or land acquisition, uh, they could be a major uh, partner entity on that. And so I think some direct conversations with them may uh, help fill out uh, uh, policies and goals and how to implement them. Um, it's a real resource that, that we should leave. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I get a touch based yeah. on the, the idea of the ad hoc committees to take the place of the, the board. It might be as simple as just looking at who the park entities are and taking the leadership of three or four of them and saying, you're the ad hoc committee mm -hmm. and saying, you got it. So right. come up with a fancy name or something. But yeah. <clears throat> then at least they've got the resources mm -hmm. to make it happen and have the sense of responsibility. Because otherwise, you, you all have to talk about each of these, the 10 of these, yeah. every month for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be talking. That's a great, that's a, that's a great <laughs> selling point. <laughs> well played. Um, yes. Um, no, but that, that's a great way. I to, like the idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, because um, I look at like transportation, for example, and you'd want to include the police department, mm -hmm. you know, because they yeah. have the local area you know, traffic authority. <clears throat> types of things so um, the challenge with the ad hocs though the only at least in our experience is you still require them to come back and you know provide the input or recommendations back yeah. before selecting so we would still need to act at yeah. some point so yeah. there's still yeah. a conversation and think about how many boards and commissions yeah. so it's it's a something we need to think about well yeah. just for example i just think so transportation because that was the first one but we would have to join you know the estuary transit or river valley transit just so Correct. the steps of the board would be required to take mm -hmm. to 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 right. do some of these measures um you know so yeah. um the board will be involved in everything that comes out of this i think because it's gonna mm -hmm. it's it's a zoning regulation type stuff you know because it, it would require an ordinance mm -hmm. or it would be a but a thing of the budget or mm -hmm. a grant or a project you know so yeah. Um, and put into our plan, our CFP, yeah, right, or whatever. Right, CFP, right. Yeah. right. So, um, 
Okay, great. Well, I, you, I, I, you guys have made tremendous progress and we're excited to see how the public receives it. And then we'll be ready. And after that, we'll so, to schedule something to give some feedback directly to you. Um, but I appreciate all the hard work. And yeah, uh, compliment so Aaron, yeah. too. And wow. Yeah. Read it, please criticize it as hard as you This can. is awful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, all, all I ask is to be constructive. Be gentle. Oh, well. Wow. He wants you to be gentle. You should have led with that. I will say, I tend to be a wordsmither, but I remember the affordable housing plan. I didn't really feel a need to wordsmith, and I'm not seeing a lot of noise. That, that's not, I'm, just, I, I'm not necessarily the best, you know, communicator either. So, but I just tend to overanalyze words sometimes. Well, when so, I edit things, I edit yeah. without thinking. I just yeah. edit. Yeah. No feelings. It's just, yeah. And, and, so and I, I'm asking is don't hold back. Yeah. yeah don't and and I think you'll get you, the public will certainly take you, uh, <laughs> take up that. Well, but that's, an, but that's an interesting point though. So yeah. again, the public yeah. needs to be informed about what this is. Mm -hmm. The, the, you know, sort of the time that we're at right now yeah. in, the, in the input needed. Yeah. I guess, how do we yeah. market this to some extent? Yeah, so I mean, we we sure get the feedback. You know, we've had, like we we've had a lot of public feedback. Okay, we've good. Public, you know, we've had other stakeholder feedback. Yeah. I mean, they even helped, some people helped write it. Yeah. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, and we have certain people who have been who have been at many of our meetings okay. and are, are happy with where we've landed. And, yeah. you know, to okay. get their support after... Right. After, but I think the idea, I, I would say 90% of the people in Madison don't know what a POCD is. Well, that was right, right, right. So how do you yeah. get that down lower? Exactly. So at least they know what it is so they can't. Well, and, and maybe we put out some sort of educational materials we lead up to the public hearing. Because yeah. yeah. we can promote things, as you know, with strategic plan. We yeah. did get it's a lot of help to say, you know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And is this draft available on? I checked and it was not on our um, if, POCD it, website. Yeah, it was just public well, was Hot off the presses on Tuesday. Yeah, last okay. week. Oh, so, so maybe like in a week, we, we need to get it up there. Out, yeah. yeah, with the link. And then similar to the strategic plan, a little marketing program, like, hey, you should take a look yeah. at this. Read yes, this. So you submit absolutely. Your, so is there an email? And do you have an date, email address? You know, that mark your calendar for the public. Right. right. But, yeah. I think, but I think more than anything, too, it's talking about, I think, where you guys started, which was the synergies between the strategic plan right. and POCD. So we don't perceive them as two separate documents, that they're integrated, that they're connected. I, I think that's really important. Yeah, and I thought what was when we had our hearing after we had a draft, there was a couple of things we just missed, and we were like, yeah. what? Yeah, the no, public was yeah, yeah, there was really, two or three things that are really, really, really like, yeah, right. great point. It just never came up in any of our conversations right. with the public. I mean, we had 75, 80 people in yeah. the uh, public uh one of the, not the retreat, but the... But it was one of our public information yeah. sessions, I think yeah. it was. Yeah, and members of the public, yeah. you know, key and I got some really good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is so well organized, I think. You know, it's a lot of pages, but I think it's easy to break it down and read through a little bit at a time. You can also just click in the table of contacts and get right yeah. to the... Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and exactly. yeah, so I do think people are going to be interested in seeing this, especially since we just went through mm -hmm. the strategic planning process. And like to Scott's point, you know, the more we can do to highlight how these mesh, these two documents mesh together, and they're not in combat with one another, but supportive of one another, okay. um, and just, yeah, get it out there so people can yeah. read it. Can I ask a rookie question? And I should know this after eight years on the Board of Selectmen, but how often do we, like, I, I think the goal of the strategic plan, POCD, et cetera, is not to put it on a shelf, right? right? Mm -hmm. So how often are we referencing this document when yeah. making rulings? Well, you know, in zoning, it's referenced all the time. at every meeting, so, I think, you know. Yeah. Awesome. An application, application, an application tries to say how what they're proposing is supported yeah. by the previous POCD, which is why we're also eager to get this one out. Right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that, I mean, from within planning and zoning, it's it's very much part that. of our yeah. lifestyle. And for grant applications, it's, it's a big deal for certain grant applications. That's true. To yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. To say, it's, oh, and it's supported and yeah. it's, you know, a priority in our yeah. POCD. And I think for with sure. our new ad hoc facility committee as well, they just had their first meeting last Great week point. what yeah, they're yeah, being yeah. charged with there's so many pieces of this that i think they're going to be referencing from both our strategic plan and we have yeah, the so. pocd yeah, yeah. Well, I think uh, we, we need to influence that yeah. 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 that's a great point yeah, yeah.
Yeah, the facilities. I think we want to help. We want to leverage these resources yeah. as much yes. as possible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, and I think this so is your point of living and breathing. Yeah. That yeah. kind of regular, you know, like in the budget, I tried to highlight things, how everything meshed with things that were. But we need to kind of put that in more common uh, daily practice. And mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get there. We're just going to, yeah. it takes yeah. time. Yeah. And the PR, CIP committee, it'll be, you yeah. know, so for next year, year they will have that document. CIP and maybe they have to start assigning a category when they look at these projects. How does that Point to an action item or yeah. something, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. How yeah. does it relate? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's the. <clears throat> The two special exceptions before the commission right now is only, we only have two right now. Yeah. We, we reference heavily the current POCD no, in supporting their argument to get the special exception. So it is, it's an important it's, document because it does set the course for a lot of development in the town and, and how you spoke to one of the attorneys. You know, I look at it all the time when I get a request to see if the request fits. Mm -hmm. and if it fits, then it's good. So it's important. It is. Perfect. Okay, great. great. All right. Well, thank thanks, you. guys. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you for coming tonight. So, thank you. yeah, thanks for everything. Thank, thank you. you. Don't work too hard on it, Bob. Not a lot. Not a lot. The is locked. It's sealed. It's in the lockbox. Yeah. Um, so, moving on to, uh, to item number nine, and I'm going to make an amended motion. I think you've got the memo about that. So, mm -hmm. to discuss and take action to approve awarding a contract for general conditions and fees of a uh, million five. $140,667,000 plus pre-construction fees of $111,900 for construction management services of the Polson Auditorium HVAC and Generator Project to Gilbane Company as recommended by the Polson Building Committee. So moved. Second. Okay, great. So um, I don't know, do we have anybody here? Is I can't remember. I don't think, was Bill going to be on for this? Bill isn't, but Peter. No, oh, Peter's here. Sorry, I didn't see it. I didn't look up. Great. So yeah, if you could just explain this for a minute, and we got the updated memo today that you know adding in the pre-construction costs. So um, what we have is we you know we have the uh, the the, the uh, Polson HVAC, HVAC pro, um, project along with the uh, generator. Uh, so we you know we needed to contract a, uh, a, a a construction management firm with the horsepower behind them to get this complicated project up and underway. So that's. That's what we actually uh, have have done to, and proposed to, and Gilbane was our winning bidder out of the uh, out of the bid solic solicitation that we'd had about a month ago. And I asked Billy; it's a, the low bidder too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, and uh, obviously excited to keep this moving forward. Um, and I know um, these are grant related projects, and we're tracking everything appropriately and handling this the uh, uh, RFP process according to the grants, right? That's correct. Yes. Okay, great. Um, Peter, remind us what when will this start? Once this is twenty twenty five. Twenty twenty five, and would it be over the summer, or would they be? It's going to be a multi year? a multi year project because we're going to be doing it with kids in the building. Okay, which adds a whole another level of complication. Yes, yes it does. <laughs> Good time. And I and I think we talked about um, probably in another couple months. Um, the uh, building committee and the facilities department will be able to come to us to talk about that timeline in more detail because they're kind of working a lot of this out, you know, um, but they need to design it, you know, and, and, and figure yeah. out, you know, and then sequence it. So, Tricky. Um, so I think I, I heard maybe June or July, right? Uh, Peter? So there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of moving parts on this. Yeah. Yeah, it would probably be closer to the beginning of June, I think, is what the uh, target date is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. we'll be hearing back from them hopefully in June, maybe. Um, a kind of more of the sequencing and everything. So, fantastic. Any any further questions on item number nine? Oh, this is great to see this moving forward. Yep. So. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Great. All right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Um, Thanks, guys. So, moving on to item number ten is um, I wanted uh, we're going to be voting on um, the grant associate or uh, matching to a grant, but uh, the update on the Concord Meadows Route One Sideway project. And so I thought John could give an update on this because this is something that's been in the work for a while. We're excited to move this, you know, see this moving forward. Um, so this is basically from Concord Meadows, um, which is on. Um, why am I going blank on the name of the road now? <laughs> Woodland Road. <laughs> um, all, and so the sidewalk would go from there, which is our, our largest affordable housing complex, up to Route 79, and then from Route 79 all the way down to Route 1. So now we'll have a completed sidewalk connecting with our Bradley Road sidewalk and with um, our downtown sidewalk. So 
Um, and these, we had received two grants for this actually. One was a seed grant and one was a TOD grant. And, um, and there's been some full match associated with it. This has been on our list of matching requirements, so no surprises. Uh, but John, if you could just give, do you have a schematic of the project to just so everybody can see it and be nice for the public to see? Um, I, I don't have that. No, I'm 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 out of state and I'm on I'm on my phone here. But, oh, okay. Um, um, yeah, so I, I I just anticipated this to be a uh, basically what you said an overall this um, description of what the project is. Uh, so maybe uh, we can offer to put on the what a uh, website though just somewhere you know the actual overview of the project. So sure. The sidewalks are going and stuff because I think it's exciting that this is something. Yeah. It's, it's going to really change the connectivity of downtown and, and a safe place for people to walk now. Um, you know, especially even you go to the end of Bradley Road and there's no, you know, and then does this go down? Um, uh, I, I just forget all the streets it touches. It, so this, so you, right, you, you, you mentioned, so it's from Concord Meadow, so it will extend from the existing sidewalk on Woodland Road at Concord Meadows uh, all the way out to Route 79. And then the sidewalk extends down Route 79 along the uh, westerly side of the highway, uh, all the way to Route 1. So it'll connect to the existing sidewalk on Route 1. And then there's a little spur that will um, extend on Bradley Road to the west to the existing sidewalk um, near Academy Street. Margaret's in there, yeah. Yes, so, so there'll be connectivity from Bradley Road, from the east side of Bradley Road over to the west side. And it, it's it's gonna you know, sort of interconnect some of the existing sidewalk in that area. And what is uh, the timing of everything? Um, so the timing, we the following agenda items here, we um, received five bids for construction and uh, the the low bidder uh, bid amount was uh, a little bit under the um, project budgeted amount. So um, if if it get if this gets approved tonight, um, the only other approval we're waiting for is from DOT to approve the award to the lowest responsible bidder. And we anticipate that within a week. And um, the contractor is ready to go. So um, I anticipate that this project will begin in a, in a matter of a, a couple of weeks or a few weeks. And it'll take place there in the summer. We've given them... Um, that they have until the fall, November of the fall to complete this, but I, I don't expect it to take that long. Um, hopefully if, if all goes well and, you know, weather cooperates. So um, um, one important thing, because it, it will be a summer construction project, um, is, you know, make sure they understand some of the community activities that are going to be going on this summer. And they're going to have to think that through in terms of construction scheduling, just saying. <laughs> Um, you know, with the parades um, and um, the Rotary Carnival is over behind uh, mm -hmm. in the Academy fields and things like that. So you might want to give them those dates, you know, as they're doing their planning. Closing, um, closing day of Little League. Right. Closing yes, closing that's, a, that's, a, that's a good idea. And we have, you know, we'll have a pre-construction meeting. We can go over those dates, key dates okay. of any functions that are going on. Okay. And, you know, and there's a staging area. Fortunately, the town garage is nearby, near the beginning of the sidewalk project. So uh, there'll be areas to leave equipment and st stage materials and so forth. So it, well, it should work out pretty, pretty nice. Do you think traffic on 79, do you think, a lot? Or is it mostly off-road types of, you know, activity? Um, there'll, be tra there'll be definitely traffic control required along... Um, Route 79. The sidewalk is is fairly well off the road, but you know you need to have delivery trucks of of material, gravel, and concrete. So um, the, there's definitely um, traffic control is a big component of the project. Okay. Well, obviously we want to get we got to get these things moving longer to get them with a nice good setup. So yeah. Um, so maybe if there's no more questions, we can just go through the next two yeah, items. Yeah, right. Perfect. Um, so um, item number 11 is discuss and take action to approve a special appropriation of $100,000 for a municipal match of the state TOD grant relating to the Concord Meadows Route 1 sidewalk project in CIP, approved by the Board of Finance on 4-18-24. So moved. Second. 
Okay. Any further questions or comments? No. No. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, item number 12, discuss and take action to approve a contract with William M. Layden Construction for construction of the Concord Meadows Route 1 sidewalk project pending the Connecticut Department of Transportation approval to award the contract to the lowest responsible bidder and authorizing the first selectman to sign all contracts and documents associated with this award. Move. Okay. okay. Any further comments or questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, um, so we are in good shape for that, John. So move forward okay. and sign it. And Thanks, we'll, John. We'll, we'll try to put Great. up Thank some you. materials once we move forward on this, just so the public can look up and look at the map, sure. you know, all that kind of stuff. So we'll put that on the website. Yep. Yeah, that would be good because it is going to be a busy time while this is going to be going on. So um, thank you. Yes. All right. Thank Okay, um, item number 13 um, is discuss and take action to accept the donation of the uh, Thelia property. Uh, 1.39 acres on Cops Road, Map 65, Lot 1, and authorizing the first select room to sign all contracts and documents associated with this donation pending Board of Finance approval. So moved. There and this came to us in the fall. Uh, we're very grateful for this donation that's out of an estate. Um, the property is adjacent to Bauer Park um, and um, excited to just add this to the Bauer Park. Um, and so it went through planning and zoning, right? We sent it on for a referral there, which we're required to do. And now they've done all the documentation and everything, and we're ready to move forward. There's no house on the property. At this no. Point. no. Is it more wetlands? Or? Yeah, a lot of wetlands. There's really, there's no like building possibilities on there. Just yeah, contiguous with Bower Park. It's a pond, no, no right? trails or anything that we can add or not, not in that area. Okay. Um, open space. Any other questions about this? No. Great. no? All right, all in, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, great. Uh, so we're excited to move that forward. Um, next item on the agenda is item number 14, discuss and take action to award a contract to Greenway Property Services Inc. for the renovation of the Exchange Field Complex in the amount of $557,000 and rock excavation in the amount of $650 per cubic yard. Funded through CIP and authorizing the first black one to sign all contracts and documents associated with this award. So moved. Okay. okay. And this is a, a very exciting project that we've been, we were very excited to move forward. Um, exchange field, it was in CIP. Coming. Yeah. Um, so this will move quickly now, right? You're going to get. This will move quickly. So after this approval, we'll be able to award the contract to the bidder and they will start, you know, almost immediately. And we, the plan is to have the field open. By August first, um, nice. wow. football. Wow! Yeah, and the contractor is uh, extremely confident that um, they're able to complete it in, in our our timeline. Wow! It's tight. It'll be working, you know, all through, you know, really May through June, and then a growing four weeks for the sod, and then be ready to ready to go. Is that softball field that's there going offline during this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And this is another, I know you've talked to all the leagues and everything, yeah. um, but we'll probably do some promotion to the public to know this area is closed off, especially during 4th of July and all mm -hmm. this. It's going to create some issues for the uh, fireworks yeah, because yeah. we can't do that exit route, you know. So we're working through all that because of this. Process. But, Austin, how will the appearance change, if at all? Uh, you, from the naked eye, you won't know anything except that it'll be a better playing field. Um, Right now on, on the football field that you see, there's a lot of ruts and humps and jumps that are in there. That will all be completely leveled out. Um, and then there'll be just irrigation um, put on that field and uh, extra no dust. Bowl. <laughs> right. And then <laughs> irrigation throughout the entire exchange field up to um, where it turns into the Lowry field by the um, batting cage. Oh, so we didn't on the soccer fields have irrigation in the past? Uh, not in many years. Wow, it wasn't working, so it wasn't operational. Yeah, so this will this will allow us to have irrigation to irrigate the entire exchange. Yeah, that's a layer. Yeah, wow. This is this is a little bit off topic, but I notice um, there are a lot of people. I say a lot. I see regularly people with their dogs off leash um, mm -hmm. on those fields. Um, I hope they're very, very diligent um, in um, in cleaning up after their animals. No, but I mean, our kids are playing 
sports on these fields, right. contact sports. Soccer and football. I mean, uh, yeah. On these Ball. fields, they're on the ground regularly. Yeah. I don't know if there's something we need to do to, to do better at, at, at policing this or, or, or more public information, but yeah, there's so, a lot of spaces for people to take their yeah, dogs. Yeah, I think Salt probably the same thing. Right. So Salt Meadow, like Jen was yeah. saying earlier, that hole that was dug, that was on, that could not have been a dog that was on a leash. Um, it was somebody right. off leash. Yeah, it was on a soccer field. Oh. Uh, Bower Park, we run into Park, right. people using the bags that we put out, but then throwing the bags into the woods and not using the trash receptacles out of there. Uh, it is, it, it's a problem everywhere. Uh, at Surf Club, we, because we're on site, you know, 12, 13 hours a day, we're able to um, police it. Uh, at the other sites, it's, it's difficult to do. We have signage everywhere. Yeah. Um, even if there was no signage, you really shouldn't let your dog, um, you know, do that kind of stuff on, on a playing field. Mm -hmm. But it, it's difficult to police, and we, we run into issues all the time. Is, is there an ordinance? I know there's a lease ordinance. I know that, that your, your dog's supposed to be on a leash. Is there an ordinance around puppy waste? I don't believe so. Pooping and scooping? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we had looked like, I guess it was a year ago, at the Beach and Rec ordinances. Remember, we looked at some of them for the facility. We never really did a follow-up after that. I think we got caught up in so many different things last year. Um, but that could be another item to add to that. We should revisit that because we talked a lot about some of the ordinance, um, you know, ambiguity, um, the question is smoking, who like, you know, who we talked it? about drinking yeah. of, of marijuana or, you know, being yeah. legal now right, and right. use. So right. we kind of had a bunch of conversations. I know we followed up with our town council a little bit. So, but maybe we add that and we kind of refresh that conversation. Because they're, they're ancient, you know, the, the ordinances for the yeah. beaches. I think we at so. least refresh them to current. But yeah. I mean, the question is, you know, who polices them? Well, I mean, yeah. is, it, is it a 16-year-old kid working yeah. in the eight? Is it, is it a, yeah. Yeah. That could easily be added to the leash ordinance, probably. That's a, a good place for that to live. Um, mm -hmm. But does the police mean, ever get called for things like that? Well, that could be I'm issued like, by the, the, I thought the beach and rack, and then they can appeal it to the police department. Can't you, for ordinances for parking? I don't think we can, we can't take it. Yeah. I thought you did for parking and a beach pass. Uh, if somebody is parked there without a pass, how do you enforce that? We don't, we don't let them do that anymore. You can't get through the gate without a pass. So we, we don't run into that anymore. Okay. I mean, I know you can't get through, but so you've never had anybody where you, they kind of sneak in through, oh, I'm turning around, and then they don't. Yeah, we have enough staff to make sure that they do. Yeah, I know you they do have seen them do it. I'm just trying to think. Um, well, to be discussed, I think we'll look into this. Yeah. It's, a, it's a fair point. I know it's been a problem um, throughout town. I mean, people, a lot of people have dogs, and particularly when you're dealing with a public facility that is used heavily by uh you know youth kids sports, youth yeah. sports stuff um you know uh and there are beaches obviously yeah i mean and that's the thing it's it's not just unhygienic like somebody stepping on it and getting it on the shoe these kids are sliding across the ground they're getting cuts and scrapes and now they're getting that biological matter inside their <laughs> open wounds and so it's you know if that was you or your kid and you had to deal with the situation like that with fecal matter, you would not be excited about it. So, you know, just pick it up. Yeah, this is common sense and common courtesy. Yeah. yeah. I know we can put as many ordinances together as we want, but it's just really, it really is about, you know, the public. Well, so I, I, yeah, so yeah. I admittedly this was yeah. a bit of a tangent. Yeah, okay. So, okay. We got to talk about it. Well, something. but I think yeah. the, the point, I think you raised a good point. Let's bring back the conversation, though, about some of the ordinances, because there are some things we wanted to fix. So just refresh. Just, yeah. Yeah, refresh it, exactly. That it was there's some lack of clarity. It's the Bower Park Committee at our last meeting last week spent about a half an hour discussing it. Um, yeah, okay. It's a problem. Um, so I think all in favor of approving item number 14, say aye. 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 Okay, great. Item number 15, discuss and take action to approve a revised round 14 ARPA funding request for $49,000 for LED portable lighting towers for Madison Youth Soccer, pending Board of Finance approval. So moved. Second. 
So this was one that had originally come to us a while back um, and we were trying to figure out what we actually wanted and what the youth soccer wanted and also the cost of it and how much the town would be willing to contribute. Was this gonna be something the town bought? Is this something that youth soccer? And so they were trying to figure out what they could contribute, right? So now they've come back with this proposal and maybe you can walk through there. Sure, um, Raquel, Joe Giuliano from Mass Youth Soccer should be on. Um, if we could promote him, please. And I'll just as he's coming on. Um, so yeah, so the, the decision was made between youth soccer and uh, my department that youth soccer would own them and take full responsibility of the maintenance, which takes that burden off of the town. Um, but um, the town will still have access to them if needed for emergencies, special events, what have you. Um, but this these lights will replace the ones that they rent every year that are, you know, loud, uh, diesel generated um, down on exchange field with uh, an LED um, still generated with a generator, but with a gas generator that are much quieter, um, more efficient, um, and the lights are, are better quality. Um, so it's a, it's a win for you soccer and all the athletes that are involved with that. Um, Got to think it yeah. helps surrounding neighbors, right? So, can you guys hear me okay? It's Joe Giuliano. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, just to echo, and, and sorry I couldn't be there tonight. I'm actually just leaving Salt Meadow on the field with, with uh, coaching. But uh, everything uh, that was just said, that's a, that's exactly it. It's, it's a lot more efficient, a lot cleaner, um, and we're not going to. He's fixing the pop. <laughs> we lost you, Joe. Thank you, Verizon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm working on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The tower. <laughs> uh, so in the brief now. that we gave, you'll see the what they look like. Oh, yeah. uh, it's much different than the larger version that they currently rent. Um, yeah, they're not like that big contraption. Yeah. Like so, stuff. Austin, who would be using these and when? So, Madison Youth Soccer uh, would use them in the fall. Um, and then they agreed to allow the town to use it for emergency special events, 4th of July. Um, it, it's tough when, you know, there's the light that gets dark out pretty early in the fall. Mm -hmm. Um, so they, they need those lights on there and, um, this will just be a better way to do that and a, a safer and better way for the, the athletes and athletes. Would be responsible for repairs and maintenance. Mass Youth Soccer. And where do they get stored? So Mass Youth Soccer has a storage facility. Um, I think it's Four Path, Joe. And then yeah, yep. I'm back. If you guys can hear me, it is Four Path. Yes. And then whatever they can't fit there, we'll find a spot for the one or two that won't fit. Nice. And I think there was just general when we talked about this, I think it was almost 18 months ago now, um, you know, that we've done, we did a number of ARPA awards to youth athletic leagues, you yeah. know, to improve because outdoor as part of the spirit of COVID was a lot of people, you know, um, uh, looking for outdoor recreation well, activities and looks you know, like a uh, uh, dinosaur. So <laughs> if there's any, uh, any further discussion, um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Thank you. And thank Bye. you for uh, you know. So, sorry about it. Sorry about the uh, interruption. I appreciate it. And thank you very much. All good. Great. Thank you. It's just another great partnership with a local youth sports right. organization in the town. That... And they're they're mm -hmm. contributing a lot of money. For yeah. That. Yeah. Well, so, to see what yeah. Little League did, now yeah. what youth soccer is exactly. doing. This is so it's amazing. Great. So. Yeah. So it's a good partnership. Um, Item number 16, discuss and take action to approve calling a special town meeting at town campus Hammonesset Room C on May 20th, 2024 at 6 p.m. for the following purpose. To approve an application from Saltwater Property Group LLC and Saltwater Property Group 2 LLC under the Town of Madison Tax Incentive Assessment Deferral Program for an assessment deferral of no more than five years, approved by the Board of Selectmen on 3-12-24 and the Board of Finance on 3-18-24. So moved. Second. Okay. So this is just uh, required for this to have a town meeting. And I, I tried to couple these a little bit so we don't have to like have it separate. And it's before a board of selectmen meeting and then before another public hearing. Um, so any questions or comments? No, All in favor, say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. great. 
Um, item number 17, um, discuss and take action to call public hearing on May 20th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. at Town Campus Room A on Zoom to hear comment on submissions of the 2024 DRS Neighborhood Assistant Act Tax Credit Program. Second. And this is another thing that will require as part of this grant application program um, that is, if I recall, I don't know if Stacy's still on, but I think this was through um, the, uh, uh, what's the name? Is it Wellington? Wellington, yeah. That's like, um, that they want to apply for this grant. And so we were just a facilitator for it. So we're not accepting the grant. We're not taking the terms. We're just a facilitator. But the public, ah, the public okay. hearing is required as part of the grant application. So we, we've done this for Concord Meadows many yes. times. Yes, yes, yes. yes. As they the gone and, and sought yeah. money, it, we have to be the official That's right. organization. Right. right. Okay. Uh, so all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, great. Well, moving on to uh, citizens' comments, please raise your hand if you'd like to make a public comment. I do not see any hands raised. I'm going to call it once. No hands raised. Okay, great. Yep. I'm uh, calling twice. And with that, I guess here, no objection. This meeting is adjourned. Awesome. Oh, all right. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Rico. You can stop recording now.